I'm Jessie. This is Zuri. I'm her nanny. I'm Teddy. Hi. Disney Channel's Jessie was much more than a TV show, but with so much going on behind the scenes, it was easy for viewers to miss out on the mini Easter eggs, cameos, and inside jokes flashing across the screen. Do you know which cast member made it into the Disney Channel Hall of Fame? Because we do. Stick around to find out. There are tons of inside jokes, goofs, and easy-to-miss references in the season 3 finale episode Jesse's Aloha Holidays with Parker and Joey. This one-hour special crosses over with Disney Channel's original series Liv and Maddie. Joey Bragg and Tenzing Norgay Trainer, who played Joey and Parker Rooney are the only cast members to appear in the episode. I told you the antlers were too much! However, Joey does drop Maddie's name once or twice throughout the crossover special. I learned how to play basketball from my sister, Maddie. <laughs> Jesse and the kids run into Joey and Parker while vacationing in Hawaii, but things get a little hectic when a nearby volcano erupts. Jesse's Aloha Holidays with Parker and Joey serves as the series' fourth and least popular crossover, and some eagle-eyed viewers quickly pointed out a plot hole at the end of the episode. This happens when Ravi tells Parker that the volcano is erupting, and Parker looks at Ravi like he's speaking gibberish. Now the lava can climb stairs? It's evolving! Game over, man! In reality, Parker should have known what Ravi was talking about since he is pegged as a science whiz in the Live and Maddie series. Only if Maddie's brave enough to take me on in a game of refrigerator roulette. <laughs> Before Debbie Ryan was cast as the lead in Jesse, she starred on the spin-off series The Sweet Life on Deck for a total of three seasons. During this time, she worked alongside Disney alum Phil Lewis, who played the one and only Mr. Mosby. On the set of The Sweet Life on Deck, Debbie was known as Bailey Pickett, so when Mr. Mosby was involved in a crossover episode of Jesse, things got a little confusing for him. In the episode titled Karate Kid Catastrophe, Emma gets suspended from school and runs away to the Tipton Hotel where she crosses paths with Mr. Mosby. When Jesse finally locates her, she heads to the hotel where Mr. Mosby ends up giving her some advice. Shortly after, Mr. Mosby calls Cody Martin to tell him that no, 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 I am telling you, Cody, it's uncanny. She looks exactly like Bailey. This was Disney Channel's way of acknowledging that Jesse and Bailey were not the same person, despite being portrayed by the same actor. This reference flew over the heads of viewers who had never seen an episode of The Sweet Life on Deck. So this isn't goodbye. I know. I'll see you in two weeks at the Math Olympics. It's easy to forget that many Disney Channel shows occur in the same universe, but we're reminded of this a handful of times in Jesse. We already know that the Sweet Life and Live and Maddie franchises take place in the same universe as Jesse, and since both Hannah Montana and Wizards of Waverly Place have had crossover episodes with the Sweet Life, and now is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's safe to assume that all five of these shows occur during the same timeline. But if we take some of the other shows' crossovers into account, we find out that Jesse also takes place in the same universe as Good Luck Charlie, Austin and Allie, Shake It Up, Girl Meets World, I Didn't Do It, and Best Friends Whenever. Jesse and Austin World Tour! Really? Because that's not what I'm saying. Jesse just wouldn't have been the same without its leading lady, Sky Jackson. The young actor portrayed the sweet yet mischievous Zuri Ross and would go on to reprise her role in the spin off series Bunked. But did you know that Disney Channel had a very different vision for this character before Sky auditioned for the role? The Zuri we know and love was born in Uganda, Africa before being adopted by the Rosses. Jesse, alphabetize my candy. <laughs> But originally, Disney Channel had planned for Zuri to be an American girl named Olivia from Chicago. Producers were so impressed with Skye's audition that they chose to rewrite her character completely. They decided on the name Zuri instead of Olivia, which means beautiful in Swahili. Following the changes, producers also chose to model Zuri's personality after the main character in the Roxy Hunter movie franchise. Roxy was known for being sassy, witty, and sarcastic, and Disney executives wanted Skye to take a page from her book. Unsurprisingly, Sky Jackson exceeded every single one of their expectations. Can you imagine what Jesse would have been like without Sky playing Zuri Ross? Yeah, neither can we. Or Jesse tries to make me do chores. 
Disney Channel hasn't always been keen on allowing their actors to direct the shows that they star on, but executives chose to make an exception for Debbie Ryan. In 2014, Debbie became the youngest female to ever direct a Disney Channel production, which landed her a spot in the Hall of Fame. In total, Debbie directed four episodes of Jessie from 2014 to 2015. She directed the episodes titled Identity Thieves, Dance Dance Resolution, Bye Bye Birdie, and Coffee Talk. Seriously, you're gonna have to learn to appreciate this kind of humor. Okay. But Debbie didn't have this honor handed to her. She worked hard to gain the respect of the writers and producers before bridging the gap between actor and director. Yes, I see. Uh, maybe it would be faster to send me a list of things you don't need. A lot happens in the episode titled Punch Dumped Love, which guest stars the legendary Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler? What are you doing at our school dance? Uh, just trying to pick up some spare change chaperoning. Disney Channel wanted to give Adam a big friendly welcome, so they came up with the title Punch Dumped Love to pay homage to Adam's movie Punch Drunk Love. But this isn't the only reference the episode has to offer. As it turns out, Adam Sandler chose to appear on Jesse because he was close to one of the show's stars. And whenever possible, do this. That's it. This star was Cameron Boyce, who had previously worked with Adam when he portrayed his son, Keithy Fetter, in the Grown Ups movie franchise. Adam and Cameron managed to squeeze in a Grown Ups 2 reference during the episode. This happens when Luke meets Adam Sandler at the school dance and says, If we have to have Grown Ups 2, I'm glad it's you. <laughs> Did you catch this reference? Tell us in the comments. My punch! I knew I should have made brownies. Disney's Jesse is known for welcoming dozens of famous actors to its set, but few episodes were as star-studded as Basket Case. In this episode, cast members had the chance to meet and act alongside the famous NBA player Chris Paul. Being the best is also about hard work and commitment, just as much as talent. However, this wasn't the first time an NBA player had guest starred on the show. Chris Bosch did make a cameo in Say Yes to the Messy Dress, after all. Basketball fans were thrilled to see Chris Paul on the show, but some viewers were too busy focusing on actor Najee Jeter, who guest starred as Terry to notice the NBA player. Just like Cameron Voice and Adam Sandler, Najee also had a role in the Grown Ups movie franchise. So Cameron welcomed his former co-star to the set of the show. But did anyone notice a certain blonde extra in the background scenes of Basket Case? This extra would go on to become the YouTube sensation Poppy. The cast of Jesse had no way of knowing that they were sharing the set with the future pop star. It was a challenge, but it was I believe a that. <laughs> It isn't every day that the First Lady of the United States clears her busy schedule to appear on a Disney Channel sitcom. In fact, throughout history, First Ladies have seldom appeared on television shows at all. Disney Channel's Jesse had the great honor of welcoming Michelle Obama to its set, and it was a groundbreaking moment for Disney. And Zuri sneaked into the Oval Office to ask the president to institute bedtime reform. <laughs> However, it was Michelle Obama's second time appearing on a teen sitcom. She made her first ever appearance on the Nickelodeon show iCarly, in which she guest starred on the episode titled I Meet the First Lady. So although Disney Channel wasn't the first network to cast the First Lady of America, they definitely evened out the score. Out of all the First Ladies, Michelle Obama is the fourth to ever appear on a TV program. You see, both the president and I know how much you and all our military children do for our country. Keep watching to find out how Debbie Ryan earned herself a spot in the Disney Channel Hall of Fame. Are you trying to neck me? Because it's kind of working. In the episode titled Lights, Camera, Distraction, Jesse attempts to direct, shoot, and edit a small movie for a film festival. But instead of doing this all on her own, she asks the kids for help and things get a little complicated. To most viewers, the scenes that the kids chose to film didn't come off as strange or familiar. However, some viewers quickly realized that many of these scenes were parodies of well-known movies. In a scene directed by Emma, Jesse and Tony pretend to be star-crossed lovers of the werewolf and vampire variety. This was meant to be a parody of the Twilight movie franchise. Next up, Luke comes up with an action-packed scene and pitches himself as the leading man. In Luke's daydream, we see him driving a convertible with Jesse in the passenger seat. How about a high-speed kiss? Anyone who watched the 007 movies immediately recognized this segment as a James Bond parody. Farewell, Mr. Ross. 
While we're on the subject of parodies, we might as well mention the episode titled The Telltale Duck, which was a parody of Edgar Allan Poe's short story The Telltale Heart. This episode has a very clever and easily missed reference in it. However, it also has a huge goof that was pointed out by some very observant viewers. In this hilarious episode, Bertram convinces Jesse to pose as his girlfriend at his high school reunion. But Jesse and Bertram take things a little too far and soon their lies unravel for all to see. The same happens with Ravi and Luke, who steal a game and lie about it. At one point, Luke says, You're supposed to run from the mummies, not walk like an Egyptian towards them. But only those who have listened to the band The Bangles will recognize this reference. After all, they do have a song called Walk Like an Egyptian. Next up is The Goof, which was brought to us by Peyton List, aka Emma Ross. In this episode, Emma writes something down on her right hand to remember it. But it's a well-known fact that Emma is right-handed, so writing down a clear message on her right hand would not have been possible. And that's a wrap on the things you missed from Disney's Jessie. Before you go, tell us who your favorite Disney Channel star is in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you love the Disney Channel, give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down there for more. We'll see you next time.